Hi guys, Judith from the Intuitive Body Foodie Network and today we are making chaga kofucha which is really just coffee kombucha which they call kofucha. Really simple to make, the health benefits of which I'll put in the description box below as well as some precautions that you might need to know before you even consider making this drink. So come, I'll show you. This is chaga that I have harvested over the years. It's very dry. I have another box in the back. And what I do is um, I let it thoroughly dry because it needs to be really well dehydrated. And then I take a cutting board and either cover it with a cloth and use a hammer to break it up or I'll use a pair of side cutters. And then once it's chopped, I will put it into a um, what do you call this, like a coffee mill, and I will make a powder with it. And then I store it in this old, I bought this a long, long time ago, and kept the tin, and so I store it in here so that I, when I put it away, I know how to find it. While the water is boiling, I'm going to put the chaga in this one gallon jar, and I have my starter, but I want to make the chaga and let it sit overnight and then I will strain out whatever larger portions remain. So I'm going to add a full quarter cup of the chaga. Something tells me I want to put a half a cup in there. I want this to be really strong. So half a cup of chaga. So I rethought my idea and I'm going to make it in this Pyrex because then I can pour the hot water directly into here and I have a lid to go over this and then I'll just let it steep. So let's see if I can do this without uh, harming myself. Let's see if my cord's long enough to get me there. Okay. Uh, now, like I said, I'll cover this and I'll let this sit and steep uh, probably overnight and then I will do the next step tomorrow. I have uh, an extra vessel and a strainer and I'm now going to strain through to remove any kombucha granules I guess as you can see all that stuff kombucha sorry chaga all the chaga mushroom chaga mushroom um, typically you can make and I will I can make about three batches from this group of uh, from this chaga that I've ground and I've added into this container. So I'm going to boil my kettle again and I'm going to make more of this for the simple reason that sometimes I just want a little bit of chaga in with my morning coffee or if I'll have an afternoon coffee which it's very rare these days for me to have two coffees in a day but if I do I will do half chaga and half coffee or three quarters chaga and a quarter coffee. That way I cut down on the caffeine. And that's usually if I'm really super exhausted and I just need a quick little pick me up. Otherwise, as I say, you can use this anywhere from three to four times. You'll know it's done because it'll run clear. Um, and like most tea, just steep it for a good, I do anyway, steep it for a good 12 hours or so. That steeped overnight. I have my jar here, my one gallon jar that I'm going to work with. And I didn't quite get all that chaga out, but that's okay. I don't need to.
If you want to add chicory to this and make a chicory chaga coffee kombucha, by all means do that. So you're going to notice there, there's quite a bit of resin in the bottom of this. You can run it through again, but typically you'll find that there's always going to be a little bit that gets in there. Don't worry about that because it's like tea, right? You want a little bit of, um, whether it's an herb or the mushroom powder, uh, because that's going to help to create the bacteria, the beneficial bacteria. I think I'm going to add about a cup of starter and I'm going to take out, no, I'm going to get a scoby from the back. I don't want to use this one. I'm going to add about a cup of starter and now I need to create more coffee and I'm going to fill this with the rest of the coffee. Personally, I don't drink instant coffee, but you can use instant coffee to make this recipe. I buy the, the beans and I grind them. Well, my Cousinart grinds them. And uh, I usually have um, fresh coffee that way. But I wanted to add that. If you wanted to make this with an instant coffee, you can. And you can even make it with the instant espressos, uh, if you prefer espresso or Turkish coffee, Greek coffee. Sometimes I, I make it with Turkish and Greek coffee as well. For today though, I'm going to make it with the coffee that I normally drink. And now I'm going to pour the coffee into You don't want to put hot coffee right straight into your um, finished well, I guess I could, no, I couldn't because I put the starter in. If you already have your chaga pre-made and you have not yet added the starter, by all means, you can pour the coffee in with your chaga. But that said, I did add the starter. So for that reason, I need to let this coffee cool before I pour it into this jar. While the coffee is hot, this is an excellent time to add sugar. Oh, I've already got a measuring spoon in there. Because I'm going to let this ferment for quite some time because I'm making a full gallon, this is a half cup measure. I'm going to add a full cup of sugar because as I've shared in past videos I'm a bit of a lazy fermenter and it's not really that I'm lazy it's just that as you will begin to see more and more I just have multiple projects always in the go I'm one of those people that I need to be busy every day um, for my mental and emotional and physical well-being if I am stagnant for too long, that's when I get into trouble, both physically, mentally, and emotionally. Uh, so, you know, it's about knowing yourself and knowing what works for you, and this is what works for me. So, that said, if you know that you're not going to leave this for a long period of time, you could probably get away with adding just a half a cup of sugar. But because I'm going to leave this after this is cooled and once I poured it into here, and I'm going to go get a scoby for here. You don't need a scoby, by the way. Um, but that said, a scoby will help speed up the fermentation process. So if you know that you're not going to leave this for about 21 to 30 days, and if you want to drink it sooner, reduce the amount of sugar. And obviously this is going to be far too much um, coffee because this is almost eight cups to fit in this the rest of this jar which is fine because I removed some of my starter right so I will add whatever's remaining into this jar and if I need to get a bigger jar to put it in 
then that's fine. I always have a little bit of coffee kombucha starter on the go. The coffee is cool, so I'm now going to pour it into the jar. Let me see what you're seeing there, okay. And I'm going to leave a little bit of space. I'm gonna to have to make more coffee for that. I'm leaving a sufficient space Let's pull that up so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm leaving sufficient space for my SCOBY. I do have a SCOBY hotel in the back. In I have two, one in green tea and one in black tea. But this is reishi green tea. And because this is chaga mushroom, I want to add a little bit of the goodness of this reishi into my chaga. So like I said, you can put... Uh, chaga chicory and coffee they are a wonderful combination together but you can also add a little bit of reishi in as well so I'm going to add a little bit of starter even though I have the coffee starter in there right and now make sure my hands are clean I'm going to grab some of this scoby and these scobies Typically we'll just peel because they grow in layers. And I don't need a big one, I just am going to put a little one in. And it'll either float or sink. You don't have to be worried about, about that or concerned about it. If it, uh, it doesn't matter where it is in the jar, whether it's on top or below. See, these ones have sunk. It doesn't matter. Um, and why does it not matter? Because when they sink, another one will just grow on the top anyway. It'll be a thin film like this one. So you don't have to ever concern yourself whether or not your scobies are floating. The wonderful thing about why I create the chaga with the coffee is because coffee contains a natural DMSO. I'll talk about that when I get to the pain, natural pain management video. So it's, I've shared this in past video, it's, it's a natural analgesic. It's a natural pain reliever because of that DMSO quality. And chaga has incredible health benefits. And then reishi, one of the greatest properties of both chaga and reishi is anti-cancer. Um, Anti-tumor, I should say, of which cancer can be. And this is wild reishi that I harvested out in the woods. Um, so if you have access to harvest your own, even better. So I showed you the chaga that I harvest. I do harvest when I can most of my own mushrooms and fungi. Um, but if you buy store-bought, that's okay. And that's why I say, even if you don't use whole grain coffees and all you have is instant coffee, you're going to take something that's of an inferior quality. To, in my opinion, instant coffee is an inferior quality coffee. But you're going to make it into a more superior coffee just by making a kofucha. And the beauty is, because when you ferment this, it doesn't contain the same amount of coffee, uh, caffeine. So not only then it is it a, de a decaffeinated drink, um, but it's also highly medicinal. So ideally you want to put a lid on this. I don't have any plastic lids, so I'm going to use this silicone lid, silicone, silicone. To me, this is a tonic. This is a health benefit tonic, right? If you are using this for that purpose and intention, and you don't want a lot of carbs because you're on a low carb diet, Allow this to ferment regardless of whether you've used a half a cup of sugar for a gallon or a full cup of sugar for a gallon. Let it ferment for at least 21 days in average temperatures of about 70 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. That will ferment a lot of the sugar out. Yes, it's still going to contain sugar, which is why if you want the least amount of sugar closer to 30 days at that temperature, is ideal. That said, if your temperatures are lower, in other words cooler, 
it will take longer. If your temperatures are, because in here it gets up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer indoors, because I don't have air conditioners, just ceiling pans. I don't like air conditioners. I think I've shared that in past videos. This could ferment in 12 to 14 days in those temperatures. So keep that in mind that temperature will determine how fast it ferments. The ideal is to keep it at a reasonably steady, consistent temperature of about 68 to 72 degrees because then the beneficial bacteria and yeast have time to build and develop and grow, giving you the most probiotics in your drink or in your foods. When a food ferments at extremely high temperatures, hot temperatures, some of that beneficial bacteria will just die off. So you'll still have a fermented food. It will ferment a lot faster, but it won't have the time to build up in the amount of beneficial bacteria that it would otherwise. So that's just kind of like a little tip and takeaway for you. In general, regardless of what it is that you're fermenting. So after you've put a lid on it, make sure you put a label on it, especially if you're anything like me and you have lots and lots of different ferments on the go. So thanks for watching. And until I see you in a future video, be well, be safe, take care, and ciao for now.